Okay, good. Are we going? Yeah, there we go. All right. So just to let you know, I was uh, I had uh, spoken about uh, doing uh, teaching training on uh, uh, fasting and praying, the importance of corporately fasting and praying. And the Lord has been speaking to me about this two or three years. You know, I brought it up bits and pieces. So uh, since I said, all right, Lord, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to teach this now. Since I've begun to do that, there's just so much more that's coming into uh, the understanding in this whole arena, the importance of this whole arena of uh, fasting and praying. And yeah, we, we all know where to pray. We all know uh, we should fast and stuff like that. But there's a lot more to it, the importance of it for this hour. Um, there were other specific things that the Lord had spoken to me about uh, portions of scripture how alive they are and we know all the word is alive but you know when the word is alive to us is not just the written but not just the logos word but the rhema word and how they pertain to that and how that fasting and praying uh, is the thing that needs to be done um, and the Lord speaking to me through personal uh, circumstances uh, where the enemy demonically hit very hard uh, people in my own family uh, things that science called incurable and things like that and wrestling and dealing with all that and um, and, and the challenge of the Lord to the disciples was uh, you know this kind comes out only but by fasting and prayer uh, when we look at um, the end days and the end of the end days in the last days will be seducing spirits, teachings of devils, that's a portion. And the, the people will be taken away from the Lord by that. Some will be taken away from the Lord by that. Well, he doesn't want that. He doesn't want them taken away. And we're going to have to war for it corporately. We're going to have to war for it by fasting and prayer. But the, the, when going back again, when he said this kind, Jesus said this kind comes out, out only by fasting and prayer. He was talking about a specific uh, manifestation, a specific ranking of the demonic realm, a specific uh, grouping kind of thing, and it's under one general thing, lunatic. And uh, we know, uh, at least in America, we know that there is more mental disease and issues and problems in this country than there's ever, ever been before. We know, too, that it's drug-related. We know that it's sin-related. We know that it's curse-related. We know that it's other gods-related. And uh, so anyway, corporate. It's going to take corporate fasting and prayer to break the power of the evil one over these things. So anyway, I want to deal with that whole thing. And, uh, and in that, too, um, there'll be teaching for all the body of Christ, no matter what nation God has set you in. But even beyond that, God is expanding what he wants me to make known and clear to Americans. Uh, less than 3% of the population homosex, but yet they're dominating, they're dominating the church in America. Um, how can this be? Well, we need to fast and pray and we need to smack these demons and we need to smack these demons so hard it will shake the people that are spewing the demonic so anyway I'm gonna get into this I'm gonna uh, by God's grace by God's help what I want to do is uh, on September 11th I want to touch on fasting and praying in regards to delivering America delivering the American church and delivering enough Americans to fear God to serve God uh, so that we can begin to turn this nation back to God and fulfill our destiny in the Lord. Um, only two nations of the world were ever called and set by covenant to God at its founding. That was Israel and that was the United States. There's all kinds of demonic lies that have gone on in the United States for years to erode, to erode and lie about the founding. You know, God doesn't care what the devil worshipers are doing. He cares what his people are doing. <coughs> but when God's people don't do what God's people are supposed to do, then the devil worshipers can take over. And uh, that's the issue. So anyway, uh, September 11th, 
Um, on that particular day, I'm, I'm going to begin to touch on some of these things, covenantal things, why America can still be saved. Am I saying there will be no judgment? No, I'm not saying that. You know, there are uh, judgments in time. God, God deals in judgments in different ways. There's judgments in times. There's judgments to specific places. Um, you know, he can judge a specific person. And then there's the temporal judgments, where he temporarily judges for a period of time. Peoples, places, things. And then, of course, is the eternal judgment. And uh, you see, um, we've been in these certain kind of judgments and we're coming into and been into a little bit of temporal judgments and I believe they're going to get even more severe for America. But you see the spiral down. But we didn't get to this place in a year. We're not going to get out in a year. This is decades. It took decades to get to this place. I don't believe we need decades to get out because once God shows up on the scene, it's different. If we look at there was the standing in the gap. You know, the prophet Ezekiel said, and this is a little bit what's going to be in the teaching. I'm going to lay it out more. The prophet Ezekiel was talking, and the Lord spoke, and, and, and the prophet Ezekiel tells us the Lord was looking for someone to stand in the gap and make up the hedge. In other words, you have this protective hedge, but you've got this big hole in it, and God was looking for someone. He, God needed someone to go in that gap. Well, God wanted... All these gaps filled, and he created the body of Christ, amen, and uh, Jesus, the high priest and intercessor, and God God has a kingdom of priests, amen, uh, kings, uh, the, the, the royal priesthood, kingly authority and anointing, that means to rule and priestly, well, our method of ruling is through prayer and fasting, and part of prayer is worship and praise and Part of prayer is um, proclamation, agreeing and saying what God says. Amen? And so uh, we'll see um, how that all get incorporated. And quite frankly, uh, uh, it just got to be too much. It was not going to be done in the amount of days. I didn't want to do it in injustice. I would have felt each day that where I stopped, I wasn't doing enough. Then I was trying to do too much in a day. And... Uh, Anyway, so I'm going to uh, leave it before the Lord with a little bit more time. Maybe I'll start on Monday with the, uh, with the basic things uh, for all of us. But for sure, September 11th, because that was the day that God showed clearly that his hand of protection is off of America. Uh, not fully. He's still being merciful. He's still talking to us. He's still speaking by the prophets. There's still time to turn back. Uh, it's not written in the scripture that America must be totally annihilated and destroyed. But it is written that certain practices will be annihilated and destroyed. So America has got to turn back from certain practices. So there are specific places and regions in the world that it says that he will judge them and wipe them. He'll do devastating things to them. But as far as other countries, there's not written. It's not written. It's not written in the scripture that America must be destroyed. Now, can America be saved? Yes, if it repents. Will America repent? I don't know. Will God grant repentance? I don't know. But I think so. And why I think so? It's not on the basis of this generation. It's on the basis of knowing God. But he's sovereign. He can do whatever he wants. But if you look at how he operates, he keeps his covenants. How many times Israel turned their back and went away from God? He punished them. He brought them back. Why? Because of a covenant. Because of the founding fathers in the covenant. And so, when we look at this, we see these covenant keepers that were part of founding of America from the time people fled other countries to look for a promised land where they could freely, according to scriptural truth, they could worship God. 
and they made covenants with God and it began something and it grew from there amen and it grew from there and it was a certain amount of colonies and then it became a certain amount of states and when we look at a lot of the states in the beginning their constitution of the states required that for a person to even be considered for political office had to be godly some of the states they had to be believers in Jesus Christ some of the states they had to believe in God and believe in Jesus Christ some of the states they had to believe in Jesus Christ they had to be Protestant I mean this staggers the imagination people that's what we were founded on those are the people that founded the beginning of this thing and God keeps his covenant you know it's only been a day with the Lord not even a day a day is as a thousand years a thousand years is a day this is like a fifth of a day this is like a matter of hours America in the eyes of God has been functioning and so this ungratefulness this unthankfulness all these things that God has done for this nation grew this nation expanded this nation increased its borders amen uh, brought inventions to ease life and save time and redeem time and in uh, uh, you know all different kinds of inventions and technology and all this to ease life and the purpose was that the gospel will go forward that the gospel will go forward from this nation so anyway uh, enough said and these are the things I want to take piece by piece a number of sessions um, I'm looking at how to break it down and there's other things that I need to add in you know this great evangelist uh, um, well again we've had different prophetic words Smith Wigglesworth Kenneth Hagin spoke to this time uh, even Daisy Osborne had a vision of this time I mean they saw destruction coming people they saw the shape of the United States changed they saw that there were such devastating things that happened inside what we know as the United States of America that it was shrunk and that its size after was less now um, and most likely that's what's going to take place now do those things even have to take place no because it's not written in scripture these were prophetic sites prophetic trajectories it is not the same level of authority as the unchanging scripture what's written cannot be changed um, that's what we need to understand uh, prophecy from a person a dream or a vision from a person is not the same level as the scripture that's written so what I want to do we're, we're not going to never mind those things because they definitely will happen if if we don't do something about it the church in America must wake up amen we must wake up awake to righteousness and sin no more it's all about the people of the Lord in the United States of America if we wake up or not now I say that appealing to my uh, fellow countrymen you know make no mistake it's about the kingdom of God in the end the kingdom of God rules over everything Jesus the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords nevertheless Matthew 25 tells us he will call the nations before the throne of his glory now the throne of his glory is not until he's seated in his earthly kingdom the scripture is clear right now he's at the right hand of the father sharing the throne of his father while he's waiting for all his enemies to be footstooled if the United States continues to be an enemy of the Lord Jesus Christ it will be ashes under his feet as Sodom and Gomorrah are. furthermore the United States will suffer a worse judgment a worse judgment than Sodom and Gomorrah because we have had the gospel of the kingdom preached to us we have had the greater light and yet we have turned our back on it we refuse it we're rejecting it and we're turning away from it for sinning humans for perverted humans who want to do every kind of lustful 
things unspeakable, things that you can't, they're so disgusting you can't even talk about them. And sometimes you want to talk a little about them just because the people that think they're of Christ protecting those things think it's God's love to embrace these people that are totally yielded and given over to the filthy, unclean, demonic, filthy, perverted things despicable things, strange flesh, nasty things. So sometimes you just want to shake people out of it. You want to shock them back to the reality of the uncleanness of it. You know, they're seduced by demons, obviously. But anyway, so I'm going to spend, I, I want to spend a little bit more time before I start presenting all this. I want to have a sense of, uh, a greater sense of the whole thing and laying out uh, sessions in, uh, in, in uh, certain things, uh, certain apportionments. So anyway, beloved, so that's the plan. So I, originally I was going to start today, and I was going to go through Monday, which is a national holiday in uh, America, you know, Memorial Day, Memorial Day, or Labor Day. Labor Day? Labor Day? Yeah, Labor Day. So... Uh, so what I may do now is I may start on Labor Day and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday is Friday the 11th is September 11th and so maybe five days, five sessions and on the 11th continue. So I need to pull a, some more things regarding America together some more quotes uh, for example Charles Finney who was very clear Charles Finney was one of the greatest preachers of awakening and revival in the United States of America in fact the people that were converted under his ministry in other words they repented to God and came to faith in Jesus see converted from iniquity and come to holiness in God amen converted from going their own way, doing their own thing, whatever they felt like, and coming back to God as His creation, seeing things His way, hearing things His way, and putting them into practice. See, that's what we're talking about. Coming to the Father through Jesus. <coughs> In Charles Finney's ministry, 80-some to 90-some percent of them continued all the way to the end of their days. Whereas the what we preach today, even Billy Graham says, all of all the people that came to the Lord through his ministry, maybe a three to five percent continue years down the line. So beloved, we, we need to take a look at these men like Finney, these great revivals, these people that brought awakening. Um and Finney specifically said that God would hold us accountable if we voted for politicians. And I reject the notion that we're not supposed to be involved. Are you or are you not the salt? Are you or not, are you not the light? So if you're not to be involved, what you're saying is don't be a light, shut it off. Hide it under a basket and let the darkness take over in the civil arena. No, no, no. In fact, I can show you from the prophet, and we want to get into this, again, Ezekiel, where he said God is going to judge, first of all, the ministry gifts before he'll judge the nation. God said, first of all, he's going to judge the priesthood. That's the body of believers before he's going to judge that nation. And God said, those first, then he judges the rest of the people. Amen. So I'm recording a video. Oh, thank you. So anyway, just to give you an update, and uh, I just want to let the Lord work with me some more on this whole message. Is a very important message. It's a message of our time. And uh, I want to come forth as the Lord wants to speak it. So I'm going to put it together. So again, Finney and uh, 
when you look at historically the United States, why it was founded, if you look at historically the original constitution of the original states, when you have these states, they would not allow an ungodly man to even run for political office. Finney said, if you vote for a liar, if you vote for a liar, God's holding you responsible. These people that are liars, these people that are sexually immoral, these people that are deceivers, and you call yourself a Christian and vote for them? Who was it that said that? I forget who said it. They said if the body of Christ would obey the scripture, it would take one political cycle if they all would abide by the word of God and not vote for any of these ungodly people that any political party in America would change its ways. They would no longer field an ungodly person for office. If the believers in the United States of America would do what the Bible says, side with God, stand with God, and refuse to vote for the ungodly, it would change everything. The political people would no longer put in these people they know that's got all this evil because they think they can get... See, the Christians don't do anything. We just go along with it. You know why? Because seducing spirits and doctrines of devils that tell you don't be the salt in America anymore and don't be the light in America anymore. That's just politics. Leave it alone. I'm not talking about the rough and tumble politicals. I'm talking about getting the demons out of the civil authorities. But you know, they're not going to listen to the church. The demons won't listen to the church until, first of all, the fivefold ministry turns away from wickedness. And second of all, the whole body of Christ, the priesthood of believers, turns away from wickedness. When that happens, then God will listen. Then we'll hear from heaven, he'll heal the land. What parts that the body of Christ rises up in and takes their place, takes authority over this mess. Getting back to it, it's going to take corporate fasting and praying corporate fasting and praying practice of Jesus practice of the apostles they wouldn't appoint leaders without fasting getting sensitized to God and hearing who was to be picked for leaders then they wouldn't send them forth until prayer and fasting and fasting with it then they would lay hands on them and send them on the specific mission that the Holy Spirit had said there to go do that's what the word apostle means people one who is anointed and sent forth on a specific mission to accomplish a specific thing it may be in a place it may be a message it may be a restoring a message amen now that's what the early church did, people. Amen? Prayer with fasting is how we set aside the soul, the emotions, the will, and we get sensitized to the Spirit of God. And when we come out of that, we come back, we come out of that with more power. More power. Amen? Amen? And if we've ever needed power in the church, we need power today. My goodness, I was looking at this thing. You see some of these drugs today these people are on? I shared with some of you. Flaca and all this kind of stuff. They had the bath salts before. It's like a concoction of bath it's, it's like it's got some of the same chemical ingredients as bath salts. There's people that smoke this stuff and they immediately go to the hospital. Psychiatric wards and never come out institutionalized forever. Flaca. Uh, 
I shared videos people walking the street on the flocka. They're talking to demons. They're hallucinating. This is sorcery. This is exactly the sorcery that it's exact what the word means in the book of Revelation. Sometimes it says witchcraft in the book of Revelation, but it's sorcery. To use a chemical or a drug to induce yourself to come to another realm. Yes, the realm where the demonic spirits are operating and they begin to hear them and they're tuned into them. Sorceries. It's going to take the power of the Holy Spirit to set these people free like that. The homosex. It's going to take the power of the Holy Spirit to set these people free like that. Amen. Amen. we got to do fasts with our prayers. Prayers with fasting. Amen. Amen. The man who brought his child to the disciples who would be the apostles of the Lord and they couldn't cast the demons out of this kid the demon or demons I you know I don't know if it says plural there or not the demons were trying to destroy the kid that's what homosex does that's what drug addiction does sexual addiction sexual sins addiction it's about trying to destroy the person Pornography is trying to destroy the person and the other people involved with them. And we need the power of the Spirit, amen, to set these people free. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Amen. Jesus, anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power, went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil, where God was with him. Amen. So this man brought this this man brought this child, brought this kid to the disciples, to the apostles. They were having great success as far as delivering people from the oppression of the devil. Demons were coming out, the sick were being healed, but this case this case with this one where the spirit kept taking the boy and throwing him in the water and trying to drown him and throw him in the fire and try to burn him. This case, they couldn't set the kid free from the demonic power that was trying to destroy his life. And they, Jesus said, where's your faith? He said, you're lacking faith. Amen? Now the scripture says, this kid was moonstruck, lunatic. In other words, he had mental illness. Moonstruck, that's what they used to call it, a lunatic. That's what they used to call it. It all used to be under one umbrella. Mental illness, lunatic, struck by the moon. It just, something happens and it has an effect on his head and he's not right. He's not thinking right. He's not acting right. He's doing things that destroy. Uh, the imaginations are going off. They're, you know, we have all kinds of scientific names for it today, but in the Bible is just lunatic moonstruck so that's the job of the church amen to set these people free so Jesus set it the spirits out of the boy out of the young guy and set him free and the disciples said why couldn't we why couldn't we manage this case why couldn't we in other words, we're having all the success all over Jesus. Demons are coming out and every kind of sickness, disease is being healed and curses are being broken off people. But this one, we couldn't. And he said, this kind, this kind, lunatics, this kind, mental illness, mental disease, this kind can only come out. But by fasting and prayer. Amen. Praise God. Well, <coughs> uh, I hope you've been encouraged by this. I know the presence of God is on this. I sense the presence of God here. This is a, this is a few highlights of what I want to get into. I want to take a little more time preparing it to prepare it into sections. I want to use the teaching gift along with it and bring it in pieces uh, day by day. And frankly, even if I started on Monday, I don't think I will be done on Friday. I think there's a lot more to be said by this. 
But one of the things I want to do, I don't want to just go by inspiration. I also want to lay down teaching <clears throat> so that you can take it, you can study it, you can meditate upon it, you can fast and pray over it, you can proclaim it, and you can go forward and put it into practice. Amen. As Apostle Rich Thomas, I'll talk to you soon again. Be blessed. So tentatively, I'll start on Monday with the uh, uh, teaching about corporate fasting and prayer. It is a key to the end times. It is a key to end times awakening. It is a key to the church coming together corporately and corporately breaking these things off of, off of cities and families and regions and nations. And uh, we'll have all kinds of lost people coming in. And you know, the more bound they are when they come to Jesus, the more hot and on fire they are for the Lord and the more in love with Jesus they are. Amen. So, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna get into that, <clears throat> and then later in other other ways we'll build on that. But it's a key, and it's a key, the solemn assembly, the corporate fast and prayer. <clears throat> it's it, it's a key to the end days outpouring of the Holy Spirit that God has promised through the prophet Joel, through the apostle Peter. Amen. And apostle Peter, if you read Acts two, it says Peter stood up and the eleven with him. They were all there. They were all there. Amen. Nobody corrected Peter. Peter has the message of the hour. Amen. So, praise God. We'll continue on this subject as soon as we meet on this subject again. Corporate prayer and fasting. The call to corporate prayer and fasting to set the captives free. Amen to turn nations back to God, to change the history and the trajectory of nations, amen, to shape the outcome of nations to the will of God, amen. Let me say this, Jesus said, Mark 16, go and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes in his save, uh, he who believes in his baptized will be saved, amen. Jesus said, go. He said, make disciples of the nations. Teach them to observe everything I said. We are to disciple the nations. It's time we disciple America. Amen. You can't disciple America if you hide your light under a bushel basket. You can't disciple America if you're salt that's lost its savor. Amen. Salt is a preservative. Salt is a seasoning that gives a flavor. If there's no salt in America, if there's no flavor to God in America, he might as well just destroy it. Jesus said the test of your saltiness is, are men trampling you underfoot? Church in America, are men trampling you underfoot? You are Jesus' body in America. He is the head, you're the body. He gives the orders, you follow. You go and do as he says. Amen. Are you allowing them to step on him? No, 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 no. Uh, 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 uh. One of the prophets said, all these wicked, saints, all these wicked will be ashes under your feet. That's the outcome. Don't tell me you love them when you shut your mouth and you walk away. The outcome of letting them continue in these wicked ways is God will burn them up to ash. And when Jesus reigns and we walk around with him, these will be ashes under our feet. Now, those that continue to rebel and refuse and never want to repent, so be it. If you've warned them, if you've told them, if you've sounded the trumpet and they still reject and refuse, and you sound the trumpet and they reject and refuse, and you sound the trumpet and they reject and refuse, so what if they're ashes under your feet? But if you refuse to tell them, thinking it's love, and they get burned up in their ashes, God's going to require their blood at your hand. Again, the prophets. The scriptural prophets tell us so. 
both those things I'm quoting are from the scripture prophets. Amen. All right. So be blessed, Apostle Rich Thomas. I will speak to you again the next time. And again, I want to teach. I want to get into teaching anointing when I teach on corporate fasting and prayer. And right now I'm looking at uh, starting on Labor Day the 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th, maybe before that, but on the 11th I want to get into specifics about America. Yeah, it may be interspersed. I don't know. You know, I'll I'll have I'll have a, a a guide a guideline that I'll go by as I sit and consider all this before the Lord and look for him to give me organizing uh, uh, sections on this. Uh, how to organize the sections on this and uh, you know to perfect that up a little bit more and um, and then and adding into that and then piece by piece and then definitely by the 11th because that was the day the hand of God uh, September 11 2001 was the hand that God the day that God showed for sure his hand of protection has been lifted off America again it hasn't been fully lifted but if you look at the events taking place since that time you will see that the way that God had his hand upon us in total protection uh, for years and years it's it's not the same and you can see by the downward spiral that God's, um, I don't want to say saving grace or his mercy, but, but his, um, his preserving power uh, is not the same. It's not the same weight of glory as it was upon America. That's the way I'll say it. It's, it's not carrying the same weight of glory or protection, uh, the same preserving protection as it's been. So... But, you know, he hasn't fully, he has not fully left. I know some, some people say, about he has not fully left. We can woo him back. But, you know, it's got to be sincere heart and truth practice. He's got to see a sincere heart, and it's got to be a people of the truth. Abraham stood in a gap for Sodom and Gomorrah and got all the way down to this small, small, small percentage of righteous people. And God said, even for that number, I'll not destroy this place. Yet God could not even find that many righteous. And when I say righteous, I'm not just talking about those who speak the gift of righteousness. Of course, that's the only way to true righteousness through Jesus. Believing he died, was buried, rose again from the dead. Amen. To justify us, just as if I'd never sinned. Giving us as a gift his own righteousness. So that we might walk with him, learn his ways, put him into practice. And as we do then we no longer practice dead works. Amen? Then we're walking in the righteousness. But the scripture is very clear. The apostle of love, John the apostle, in one of his epistles said that, that he, he, he who sins is not walking in righteousness. And to walk, to walk in righteousness means that we don't practice sin. We don't, we don't sin anymore. The one who's born of God doesn't sin anymore. Stop sinning. We, we're not to continue in sin. We can't, we can't practice sin if we're truly uh, serving, seeking, and pursuing uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, so uh, anyway, so we've got to pursue that, amen, and fasting and prayer is going to help us, and we'll get on the series. Anyway, let me, let me, uh, let me get out of here, and uh, for your sake, and God bless you. I'll talk to you soon, Apostle Rich Thomas. Amen. Be blessed.